Hey traders. All right, so um, firstly, I want to thank you guys for all the emails that you shoot through um, and also comments under the YouTube videos. Um, it really does give me some sort of an insight into um, the effect my videos are having on you, also what you're learning from them, and if there's any common misconceptions there as well, um, which is fantastic. Some of you have really great ideas that also allows me to start looking at the market in different ways as well, um, which is fantastic, and I can utilize that to, to come up with something better um, for the group as a whole. Now, um, I did receive a, a quite an interesting email this morning from a gentleman. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, but some of the things he said really um, occurred to me that there are misconceptions in regards to the tools that we utilize. And I'm starting to think that there's some of you that who have been sending in screenshots as well, uh, utilizing some of the things we're talking about possibly in the wrong way, right? So let's have a look at this now. This in particular, the first area where he was talking about uh, where I found a way to trade the market that works for me, so uh, let's not fix what's broken, right? Um, one of the things that I want to make clear is that uh, the methods that I've used myself, they haven't been retail trader methods, okay? I, I was institutionally trained. Um, for many of you that have been asking me over and over, um, I was a financial advisor and I specialized in particular areas. Currencies were one of them. Um, but we, we did get training over the broad spectrum, but we then did have specific training um, with certain aspects to where our focal points were going to be. And one of the things I can tell you is institutional trading is vastly different from trading as a retail trader. Okay, um, When you're looking at the charts, uh, for example, when you're looking at all of this, there is a, a bigger story on the other end of this. As retail traders, what we utilize is tools and possibly tr being able to train our naked eye in seeing movements before they actually uh, are happening or movements before they happen, right? But if you were in uh, an institutional trader, what you will find is that by far compared to being a retail uh, trader, you'd probably have a thousand more pieces of information that would be brought together, analyzed uh, for you. Uh, for you to be able to then make decisions in regards to movement, trade, all of uh, all of that. Um, we, for, for me in particular, um, all of our individual clients, um, their accounts were also uh, traded according to their risk profiles, right? So all of that stuff comes into it and you're going to have to psychologically understand not only the information that's coming from analysts, but also what you're seeing. Now, here, if you think this is complex, um, when you have multiple screens, like 6 to 12 screens in front of you, that has so much more information than this, it's a different story. It's a different ball game. Also, uh, institutional traders will not trade the lower time frames. Okay, um, something that I've started to do now, which is trade the 15 minute charts, but back then uh, it was nothing less than the daily time frames, right? Um, w four hour time frames, yes, if you're scalping, but uh, again, you're never going to be doing anything less than a daily um, time frame uh, trade or, or chart trade um, when you're doing such things as inter institutional trading. So it's vastly different. Now, with this gentleman here, he then tapped into saying um, some of the, the tools that I've mentioned in previous videos. And I'm just going to quickly go through them and explain because I think there's some misconceptions in regards to um, how they're being utilized, right? Or that how they should be utilized. Now, in doing so, I'm also going to talk about Confluence, okay? So here's a chance for you to kind of bring all the tools together and figure out where your point of entries are going to be. Now, in, in his... Um, Second paragraph, he's talking about support and resistance lines don't do anything, okay? Um, the thing about support and resistance lines are this. Um, first of all, we look for those areas on higher time frames. Sure, market is going to at times penetrate right through the support and resistance lines. It's, it doesn't mean that when you have a support resistance line that there is this barrier there that's never going to be penetrated. Absolutely not. What we're looking for though is particular price behaviors around those regions because you know when you're looking at the market overall so we're on a on a one hour chart for euro euro um, usd when you're looking at the market overall the first thing that's going to pop into your head especially if you're a new trader is what the hell am i looking at what am i looking for 
right? We start utilizing some of these tools like trend lines, like um, the FIB tool, like uh, harmonic patterns, um, like market maker patterns, for example, uh, moving averages, um, candlestick patterns. All of these things combined allow us to now focus upon specific areas on your charts where you look for entries now a lot of the times if you were on a daily chart and you were say somewhere here and you paid zero attention to this and zero attention to this right you would not know at that point in time that this market's going to continually fall sure a lot of people are going to start applying um, uh, supply zones um, sell zones they're going to start looking at um, volume in the market yeah, fantastic. All of that can give you some sort of uh, indication that you might be in the right frame of mind and you think it would be accurate in directional wise. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the market as you see it is going to move from here all the way down here before it starts to consolidate, right? And you're going to bank 487 pips out of it. That's not how it works. So what we're doing here effectively is in this case, where when we start applying support and resistance lines, we're looking at specific areas where the market will come, and then that's what's going to grab our attention. Either that, or you sit in front of your computers 24-7, waiting for that time to come and happen where the market's giving you an indication as to where you're headed. Now, before I go further, the one thing that I want to stress, remember what I said earlier, when it comes to institutional trading, when you're looking at your screen now, you then add like thousands of bits of more information to it is then what you'll start to see, right? And the, the way that they will approach the market and trade it is vastly different. What you're seeing in, in your charts right now, if I was to take everything off, is just red and green candles. And they're moving in particular directions, uh, these waves on them and these wicks on them. That's all we're going to be able to see, right? What we're doing now is, when we're starting to apply support resistance lines, when we're starting to use fibs, uh, harmonics, uh, moving averages, pin bars, uh, candlestick patterns overall, we are now trying to get as much information happening on our charts. Um, we're never going to get close to what the institutional traders have, but we want to get to a point where what we have is enough to be able to make judgments as to the, um, sorry, uh, for, for us to be able to confirm judgments that they're making. Okay, now let's get back onto this. So support resistance lines here. In this case, he's saying they don't do anything. Of course they do. They're giving us areas. So uh, let me give you an example. AUD JPY, right? You get rid of all of this stuff. See this line here? Now if we were to jump onto a daily chart, right? Let me go back to a 50. Actually, no, i leave that there. This is the daily chart, right? And we did discuss this in the previous video where um, here's where price was, right? Here's a wick to the high. This is the resistance area. Now, the first thing that I did at that point in time was I grabbed my uh, rectangular box and I just drew a box in there. And then... I scroll to see where price was at that point the last time, right? And then I thought, okay, we've got back on the 31st of December. We're looking across. There's multiple hits to this zone here, and this is on a daily chart. So what that says to me is it's a strong area of focus. Now, sure, in this day, where if we then move on to a lower time frame, what you're going to find is that the market broke through and then it just started climbing, right? A couple of things that are absolutely essential for us to understand now. One, just being able to spot this has actually given me some focus into a specific area of the charts, right? And I know two things can happen from here. One, market breaks through bounces back off of this line and then continues going up. If, if market does bounce off here, and you can, you can see that on a 15 minute chart better, market does bounce off here, right? Or, or let's say market does break this line and then goes up and then comes back and does a bounce off this line, then I've got to some degree confluence now that the market is going to continue up going in this direction. If not, what I'm going to start looking for within this box here now 
is price behavior, where the market will either consolidate, it will do a spike up and then reverse back into the zone, back into this area here, right? I'm not going to, just because the market has come close to hitting this, take a reversal. Because I think this is where this gentleman's making the mistake, where he just thinks you create your support and resistance lines and you simply take your entries when the market bounces off of them. You don't. That's not how it works. And so what we're doing uh, realistically is just looking for specific behavior. If market is bouncing off this here, and this is early in the Asian session on a 15-minute chart, if it's bouncing off here, then fantastic. But we're not going to look for entries until we've got our confirmation. Um, with experience, you'll know that if the market in these areas just goes up, down, and then just continues to go down, there's something that's wrong, right? So something like this will happen, for example, where up goes down, and a lot of people may be expecting market to continuously go down. It wouldn't. We're expecting a pattern formation to happen around this region. So in this case, market does come back a whole month later to hit that area again. Right? Sometimes it's going to hit it the first time and then break right through and continue on. Now, here's the one thing, mate, uh, that you guys, you or, or the, uh, I mean, I was focusing on the person who sent that email, but uh, to everyone that you guys aren't seeing, there are seasonal targets, quarterly targets uh, for currencies that are out there, institutions or, or the, the market makers will be more, more aware of them. Um, a lot of people will never admit to this, but the World Bank and the IMF, they do, to a large degree, have control of the markets. And what I mean by that is saying that certain targets are handed out by these people. We're not, as retail traders, aware of that, right? So when major trends are broken, then what we know, one, is that seasonal uh, or, or targets might have changed, right? So you've got to understand that. But, and that's the reason why we're looking for specific behavior. So when price breaks here, comes back, you're always waiting for a retest. If there's no retest, then there's something wrong with your analysis. And if there's no retest, you're not looking for entries. Okay? So we wait for the break, the retest to happen, and then for you then to apply the rest of your criteria. So all the other tools that you utilize for confluence that happen. Now, here's the one thing that I did predict here, that if we were to zoom out, is that price at some point is going to hit this line, right? And then I'm expecting that the market is going to then enter into some form of a reversal after this. That's my initial prediction. So what I'm doing is I'm waiting for the market to do its thing. How do I make that analysis? Well, I go back into what the market has done previously. And you can go as far as you actually want. So in this case, if we were to go into the daily chart and then go back into, say, where the market, this lowest point here, that happened in uh, June of 2016. So on some level, from about here, which is September of 2016, the market's been on a climb, right? What do we know about markets that always move in waves, right? So we're expecting some sort of a correction. Now, that's when you start applying all your other tidbits of knowledge. It's not to say that, hey, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to think markets hit this, it's going to start bouncing back right now. Because I don't know when it's going to bounce back. I don't know what the seasonal targets they've, they've received. I don't know what the monthly targets they've received. All I know is that there's going to be an opportunity for the market to reverse back down this way at some point. And I'm waiting for that, right? If you go on to an hourly chart, it's where, okay, see my, um, my rectangle right there? Price comes back, if it continues going down, hits this line, goes up at some point. What, I'm, what I would be now expecting is for price to come down, pass this line, and then come and retest this. Right? Once it retests and moves aggressively south, I will then take an entry off of that. And I can easily, just from a move like that, possibly bag a couple of hundred pips. Okay, That's what we're doing. It's points of confluence where your markets are now, you're, you're, you're utilizing that, you're utilizing fibs, you're utilizing harmonics. It doesn't matter if your harmonics, in this case, as you're saying, which is, I believe, the next point, of harmonics uh, patterns are all based on a three-wave corrective structure. Mate, anyone that can Google or anyone that can read a book will know that. 
that doesn't matter. What matters is that when you're looking at charts this way, and at some point, uh, forget some point, say for instance you haven't trained in the ability to go and um, do your, your FIB calculations to figure out um, what the moves were, right? So let's just do this. Let's apply some of the harmonics there, right? And say on a one hour chart, there is a butterfly pattern, which is a, a, a bearish butterfly pattern, and now the market's going to come down, right? All that's doing for us right now is creating another point of confluence. It doesn't mean that just because we've drawn in a pattern that we're now going to jump in right at the top of, of that and say, yep, we're in, okay? Some people might, that's just stupidity. What we always look for is confirmation. And again, for me now, in my head, what's going on is to say, there's a very good chance that this currency pair, AUD, JPY, is in reversal mode, and that could continue going south. That could, not will, it could. You then apply all the other tidbits of, of knowledge that you may have. For example, what, what sort of correlation does um, the AUD pair have with the USD pair? Right, the base currency in the AUD JPY pair is the AUD currency. Right, so uh, confluence-wise, how does that work? Um, which is the stronger currency out of the the both of them in the pair? You start applying all of that knowledge to your trading. What I will do once market is breaking past here, unless I'm going to look for entries of the 15-minute chart just to possibly ride some of this, these waves. Um, but realistically, long term, what I'm going to do is wait for price break. Uh, retest off this now you utilize that as a support area before the market comes back down again right when when it does that is when I will now say to myself okay Shiva I've got I've got in my home office I've got massive whiteboards around me right I will write that down AUD JPY is now possibly uh, doing a seasonal correction I'll write that down and what happens is that every trade that I take, I will have this noted for myself, which wave, uh, which cycle is this currency pair on. The level of analysis that you must do when it comes to forex trading is massive. We do not have the benefit of like groups of analysts who do this continuously 24 seven for us and then hand us reports so that we can then utilize that and not have to do the additional work. Okay, so again, um, these things here really come in handy for us to be able to justify our trades. In terms of harmonic patterns, in terms of market maker patterns. Now, I want you guys to know one thing, um, because there, there's a lot of talk about different styles of trading. You know, so, and it all, also just comes down to the sort of trader that you are. Um, I, I call myself the lifestyle trader. Right? It's just my motivation for trading is something completely different now to when I had a full-time job. Right? But on top of that, you've got your scalpers. Right? You've got your range traders. Right? You've, you've, and, and you've also got the high and low traders, which will pretty much um, try and get, capture the lowest point of um, you know, a weekly cycle or a monthly cycle or the highest point of a, a, a weekly or monthly cycle. Um, and that's different. You know, some people just are pattern traders and they'll say, I'm going to see specific patterns. And when I see that setup, I'm going to trade that and, and nothing else. There are certain people that trade just off EMAs. Now, I think in this uh, email as well, this gentleman was saying that um, EMAs, uh, moving average, they will never give you anything more than a late answer to a question, right? Now, no one's asking for an answer to a question from an EMA. We, we don't want to know that. What we are doing is utilizing just the movements of the EMA, which gives us price directional flow. And when we get that, then we can make decisions or confirm decisions, make absolute judgments on whether or not market is going to flow in a direction in which we want it to flow, right? So if we tie that in with my simple Forex strategy, and this just comes down to experience where I'm not saying to you when market comes and hits this line, take an entry for a reversal. Because we don't know if market at that point in time is going to um, hit the 200 and just bounce off and sit there and consolidate, right? We've got no idea. What we do have is when you apply market cycles, when you apply Elliott waves, when you apply your harmonics, that there's every chance that the market could move in a directional flow, right? Again, when you're applying your market cycles and that understanding of how the market cycles work 
is really coming from an understanding of how institutions work or how institutional traders um, trade, right? Also, whilst we're at this, let me also clear this up for you guys. This notion of market makers, right? A market maker is a large-scale dealing desk. That's all it is. It's a large-scale dealing desk. They, they handle massive transactions for like massive clients, banks, Fortune 500 companies, insurance companies, governments, right? So what we're doing there or what they're doing there, utilizing it, is they will move particular markets in ways to balance out uh, their, their transactions. That's one thing. Also, they're also in the business of making money. So they will utilize movements in the market to um, fulfill their own transactions. Now, the one thing you're going to understand is market makers are not in control 24 hours a day, five and a half days of the week. They're not. They will do their specific moves when their transactional flows are happening. It does not mean that, you know, if you're looking at a 15-minute chart, that every single move is that of a market maker. Right. The, also, with order releases, that's a different thing. I mean, this guy was talking about um, pin bars. A pin bar is just an order that couldn't be filled at the moment. Right. The one thing you're going to understand is when you're looking at these charts, the, the common misconception is, you know, when you, you start hearing about the bears and the bulls, to some degree, they do have an effect. Right. But again, it that effect only comes into play when market makers are not doing their thing. This whole market maker concept, this isn't something that just one person invented somewhere, right? Um, we hear about the market maker methods of trading. This is not something that's new that's been created by one person. This is institutional stuff that's been, that's existed for a very, very long period of time. Um, we utilize those um, methods and we've been doing it for, again, for a really long period of time. So there is no copyright over all of that sort of stuff. Just, just, just be clear in your mind of how this works. That is a method in which you see specific behavior and then you can start recognizing it. Uh, when we're looking at uh, uh, an M pattern, W pattern, double top, triple top, all of that sort of stuff, right? These are signature structures, if you will, that a market maker will create. That's basically it. That's, and when you see those signature structures, that's what you start to utilize because that's giving you the behavior is where they're setting up to move the market in a particular direction. Why are they setting up? One, because they're going to commit hundreds of millions of dollars to that move, right? That's the first thing. The other thing that you need to understand is when you're looking at your charts is that, you know, when the, this gentleman's talking about pin bars, that, that's an order that hasn't been filled. In order to move the market, especially when, when we're talking about the majors, in order to move the market, just one tiny pip takes thousands upon thousands of lots. Each lot is about equivalent to 100,000 of the base currency, right? So consider how much money would actually be required for um, the, the, the market to, to move those pin bars to be created. Just become aware of the massive scale in which we work. So it's not as simple as where you're trading on Nadex and you're saying, well, that con contract wasn't, wasn't um, triggered or, or fulfilled. Okay, it's not as simple as that. So we, in, in a lot of ways, we've got to start thinking more along the lines of what the institutions are doing and then utilize as much information as you can um, without kind of becoming overwhelmed by it. Right. So again, coming back to market makers, um, they're not in function 24 hours a day, five, five and a half days a week, um, but, that, but they are at the same time as well. And when we're, and we're looking for their signature moves, because if we see it, we can trade it. Right. Uh, the other thing to note, um, harmonic patterns again, uh, when you apply Elliott waves and you mix it with uh, FIP, uh, percentages, they give you an indication as to what a possible uh, market directional flow will be. And I'll give you another example. Going back to EURUSD 15 minute chart yesterday, right? All of my analysis now, and, and I've got the trend lines drawn in here as well. So, uh, mate, if you're watching, uh, listen carefully. Now, if I was to zoom out, here's when I said to you guys where I drew in these trend lines yesterday, and we've also then applied. Um, which was it? I think it was a bullish bullish pattern. That was a for one hour chart. 
and we had a, a bullish pattern. Okay, here we go. So I want to show you something. So let me zoom back in, right? So you, you've seen this. This was a channel flow, your USD, that's been happening for at least a, a couple of weeks. It's coming down. Now, I think what the gentleman where the, the common misconception is, is where you will draw in your trend lines and as soon as price hits them, you will trade the bounce off of that. And in the way and, and manner in which I am stating this, that is completely incorrect, right? I think that's what you would in theory expect to do, but how you should trade it would be completely incorrect. If price goes and behaves a certain way around here and then market's pushing down, you see a week to the high off of this, sure, you can look for an entry. If you tie that in again with and points of confluence, like um, is it at the start of uh, London or New York sessions? Fantastic. Or even, even Asian session for depending on currency pair? Fantastic. You can then apply some of that knowledge and say, yep, price is going to go down in a particular direction. And then the reverse is also accurate. So, And then if, if I see this sort of behavior happening um, going in towards the middle of the New York session, guess what? I'm not going to look for an entry going up this way simply because through experience, I now know that orders, orders and volumes fall during the second half of um, New York session. And why? There's no dealing desk. There's no dealing desk after about midday unless there's specific news releases that are going to happen and there's some sort of a setup or transactions that need to be fulfilled. There is no dealing desk after about midday or lunchtime um, after New York session. So again, it's when you're understanding how institutions work, you will just refrain from trading around that time, especially around these points. But what I am looking for is at specific times, like here, where price does go up um, at the towards the beginning or middle of the London session to hit this point, come back down again, and then go back and create another point for, for me right here, right? I can draw in now a support and resistance area. Now I can draw a resistance zone here as well and use this as a dynamic cross um, and say, does price behave a certain way around here? If it's not behaving the way you want it to behave, you let it be, right? Also take note that we've got our 200 EMA here, right? Now, in this case, price did hit and, and uh, respect that, right? Um, we're gonna come back to the EMAs, but um, what we're looking for combined, combined here is points of confluence. So if you get your, your trend lines that you drew in and price starts to behave a certain way there, you get your 200 bouncing off there, you've got your 50 there, you've got, um, your proper uh, support and resistance lines that you draw in on higher time frames. Um, you've got harmonics patterns there. You've got your market maker patterns that form a as well. Um, all of those things combined can give you now a strong confirmation that your directional move that you're selecting is accurate. What would be missing, my friend, if um, you kind of look at it in the, the literal sense that you're looking at it here is your confirmation. So basically what I'm saying is that all of these things are tools. It's not the tool, because I think from just reading what you're writing, is you're trying to explain to me what they are. I already know what they are. And all of, all of all you guys that are watching my videos possibly know what they are. But what they are is not of importance to us. How do we utilize them is what's important to us because the combination of them in how we utilize them is going to give us those points of confluence that will allow us to make our decision on whether or not we are going to take an entry, right? Now, this harmonics pattern here, when price bounces off here, I don't care if harmonics hits here, I'm not gonna take an entry straight off the bat here, right? Harmonics was showing, um, this was showing here as well yesterday, right? If you look at my points, now if you go through my previous video as well, because I, I did um, discuss some of this, I think, in there. Now, when price came down, right, and it started to stall, wick to where my line was drawn in. This was drawn in previously. So, you said in your email that my, the market does not know your, your trend lines. Of course it does. Of course it does. And in this case, this proved it. 
these proofs, you know, even, even when you're saying that the market doesn't know our um, EMAs, of course they do. Where you're going wrong with that is where you have you don't have that understanding about um, the market cycles and how they work in relation to your EMAs. Once you master that, you'll know when to strike and when not to strike, right? So remember when I said to you guys in um, the Simple Forex strategy one, where once the cross of the 50 and the 200 happens, um, say for instance the 50 crosses below the 200 and then price starts to consolidate, what are you expecting? You're expecting the price to come and commune with the 50, right? The last thing that you would do is look for then a long trade going up where the market will bounce back above the 200 again. Sure, will it happen? There's every chance it can. If the market has not entered into a directional flow, if the market makers are not in, in doing their thing and the, and the market's kind of just choppy, anything can happen, right? So the market could go back up again. But realistically, what you're looking for or ex expecting now, and you can utilize the rest of these tools to confirm that directional move is where you're saying, yep, I'm, I'm looking for market to come back, bounce off my 50, and then give me a spike to the high. Because, hey, if the market's going to move 50, 100 pips down in, in one direction, you need to see a stop hunt. There's plenty of times where I have not seen stop hunts. Do I take that trade? Of course not. Why? Because I want to maintain a, as high a, a percentage in the money rate for myself. Why? Because I want to be a consistent trader. What am I doing with all these tools? I'm utilizing them to create information that I used to have when I was an institutional trader surrounded by analysts. I don't have that anymore, right? So what I am doing is I'm utilizing all of that and then utilizing just pure naked price action to confirm for me where the market's going to go in. I'll give you an example. So yesterday, after having done all of my analysis, right, this was expected where I, I knew, and, and, the, and here's the reason why I drew this line in. I was in the market, uh, well, I was, I was awake anyway, um, up until about this point here, this point. When, and all I wanted to see was the, the uh, news release that happened uh, with the US dollar yesterday, right? So when market came up, hit this, came back down again, the one thing that I was certain was that this was going to be W formations happening, right? This here, uh, Euro USD, um, I think AUD USD did it as well. Um, there's a number of them actually. This one here as well, uh, Euro JPY. Now, what I was expecting, and, and here's the purpose of the line, this, this trend line, which you've said that the market does not, not, not know these trend lines. We don't care about that. The market, first of all, does, right? Um, again, being an institutional trader, uh, on your screens, you will have certain points where it will just outline these are going to be your um, key areas that, uh, without saying too much, um, it's going to come back and hit and price is going to behave a certain way. Let's just say that much. So the reason for this line really is where once price comes and hits this line, I'm now looking for specific types of behavior. That, that bit there, I'm going to repeat myself there because this is the bit I really want you guys to understand. I'm looking for specific types of behavior here, specific types. What do I mean by specific types? I'm looking for one type could be a, a candlestick behavior. All right? Another one, another type could be market maker behavior. Okay, so uh, and, and there are uh, other types as well. Uh, some uh, apply to um, retail traders, other apply to institutional traders. It's, it's completely different. Um, but what what I would suggest is that these are the areas, the confluence points that you create or focal points. Uh, let's name them focal points now. Um, where when you have your support resistance drawn in, when you have a harmonic pattern. When you have your fib lines drawn in, when you have your EMAs drawn in, right? If you're trading a, say, a trend line breakout, when I'm going to show you an example of that, um, you should be able to see it on my screen right off the bat. But when you're, you're trading that, you're, you're effectively establish, establishing focal points. And in this case, this was a focal point that I created. Why? One, I knew there was going to be news release, right? Um, Investing.com, Forex Factory. Um, if, you, if you've got the, the three bull heads or you've got the red envelopes, uh, even the orange ones, those are pretty heavy news that's going to come out, right? 
Um, so I'm, expect, I'm expecting if they're already spending so much of their time and money establishing a structure, then I know there's, there's a directional move already pre-planned. We already know that. In this case, remember, and I've stated this in previous videos, a lot of the times the news will be used to create the false moves. Okay? News comes out, it's bad news. Uh, actually, no, I don't think it was bad news. I think it was just uh, on even par uh, or something along those lines. Market pushes, actually, no, sorry, correct me. Um, even par, and I think for, for the US, there was some good news. Right? So here's where you start applying correlation. Very, very important correlation. The US dollar, okay, which is the, the, the uh, official reserve currency of the world, um, it negatively correlates with all the other major currencies and all the commodities out there. So if there's good news for the US dollar, good news for the US economy, guess what's going to happen to the rest of the currencies and commodities um, around the world? It's going to go kaput. Right? US dollar goes up. Other currencies come down. So in this case, base currency, euro, euro, USD currency pair, good news on par with the US dollar. Guess what they did? They used it to spike the euro down, right? A couple of things that are, that are going to happen. That's going to, a lot of crazy, stupid traders that don't know what they're doing, they're going to jump straight into that because I'm missing a trade, right? A lot of other people that would have had this directional move accurate and they would have jumped in early. And uh, mate, um, email dude, when traders take trades straight off a bounce of a trend line or something like that, this is the sort, sort of trouble that they get into. And I think, I, I know what you're trying to say to me, but I think that misconception is what's going to get you into trouble and it's going to get a lot of people into trouble. You utilize this as a key focal point of where the market will come back and behave a certain way. If it doesn't, if, if this market just continued to go up this way, you wouldn't look for an entry here. You'd look for an entry where the market does a pullback and then another a wave up before you'll consider an entry. But in this case, this line is drawn in, market goes up, I'm now waiting for a specific behavior around here. So this fake move down and then the market moves back up. What did they do? They moved the market back up in the direction that was already proposed anyway. They did that. Uh, stop hunts were, were done, uh, people, false moves were happened. There would have been some people that would have gone into these, uh, these trades here and they would have had very tight stop losses. Um, their stop losses would have been gone before the market moves up in the accurate direction. What am I suggesting to you? Here's what I'm suggesting. Price comes down, goes back up, right? And then here's this area here where, again, it retests your trend line. Here, remember when you were actually saying to me, uh, support resistance line, don't do anything, right? Um, and I think somewhere you actually wrote where the market isn't aware of that. Here's proof. Here's another proof. The market is well and truly aware of this trend line. And if, if you kind of start learning how to draw them in, you will know exactly what the market knows. That's the whole point of all of this. These trend lines here, when they're drawn in, see these ones here, they, when they're drawn in um, from higher points to lower points, um, this point here, look at this, where market, this wick to the low, the market knew that trend line was there. Again, for us, we're looking at this from the point of view as just a line. But from the institutional point of view, that actually means something. Okay. The other thing is you're accurate in saying um, just drawing in the trend line isn't enough. It's, it just comes down to this. The use of your tools or knowing how to use your tools is extremely, extremely important. If you don't know how to use your tools, or, or the trend lines in particular, sure, you can draw your lines any way you like. It's not really going to do much. But we're not suggesting that you go out there and just blindly draw them in. In this case, look at this. We drew in the channel. Again, I wasn't saying to you guys just, just as soon as the, the market hits it, trade reversal. But this, here's what I was going to show you. Points of confluence. You've got your harmonics pattern, right? Your harmonics pattern would have been showing you here as well at some point in time. You just don't enter straight off. Where you enter is when price comes back to hit that area, issues you with some sort of behavior, maybe a pin bar, right? Maybe two hits to the trend line here. And then where do we enter, enter our trade? We don't enter straight off here. We don't even enter as soon as the market hits here. Where we enter is when the market has given us confirmation they've done their thing here, somewhere around here. So I would look for an entry off here, or you, you can even look for it on the pullback, but off here, right? 
how many pips are you wanting to collect? Remember, you're, an you're not, not an institutional trader, you're gonna be a lifestyle trader here and you're training yourself to be able to pick up 20, 25, 30 pips maximum consistently. If you can do 20 and just focus on 20, there's plenty of really experienced, well-educated traders that I know of that are just doing you know, a set number of 20, 20, tra uh, 20 pip trades um, a week, a fortnight, a month. That's it. And they will just pile up their, their lots on, on top of them. So th that's, look, look at it this way. So in roughly um, 15, 30, 45 minutes, you've got your 22 pips, including your spreads. That's it. All of these confluence points, your harmonics, your trend lines, um, all it's telling you, and, and, and this hit uh, candlestick behavior hit to the low at this trend line point of view, it's your confirmation to take that trade. Now, if I was to take your advice and just look at this from a, th a theoretical definition point of view um, and say, you know, they don't really tell you anything, well, I wouldn't know that this market's going to head up in this direction then, right? But we're utilizing these, to these tools in, in a manner in which it tells it, it confirms for us that this directional move is going to happen, right? Next thing. Um, trend lines. Remember, I did mention this in the video, and this this is exactly what I was talking about. Where your point in regards to trend lines being um, they don't actually say much or do much is accurate only to a point. And if that only to a point is if you treated it this way, where in this case price breaks this trend line, comes back into range, right? Market comes back. You said market doesn't really recognize our EMAs, it, it doesn't know it. Of course it does, the EMAs are calculated based off the market. In this case, look at this, price comes and communes on the 200. Why does it consolidate off the 200? It's there, it's telling you a story of what's going on in the background there without giving you a thousand pieces of information, right? This is where you need to, and, and I think, mate, uh, if you've had the institutional experience, you kind of know what I'm talking about. There's so much more going on behind the scenes where we're not aware of. And you know, the brilliant, brilliant thing about using some of these indicators in terms of uh, even just drawing in lines is that you don't need to know that thousand bits of information. We don't really care. As long as we can utilize it to pick our 20, 20 pips out, we're beautiful, we're happy, right? So, and even for net traders, for you guys, if you can utilize this and know that this price is going to move in a particular direction and you say, I'm going to enter into a, a two hour binary. Well, you know, the really cool thing is when you go in for your contract, what you can look for is a, a out of the money um, a spread uh, that, that, and that may be, and, and you're going to have to, and here's where it gets tricky, you're going to have to be able to calculate your spreads, but um, you know the market's going to move in a particular di direction over the next couple of hours, so what you can do is, you take and trade from here, and you can uh, search for a particular spread or entry um, somewhere up here, right? Where? The middle of this, middle of this wave, because you kind of know this market's going to move in this direction. You've got points of confluence. Now, mate, here's the other thing. In regards to this trend line here, and, and this is a, a, a very good strategy that a lot of people out there use, um, which is simply just a trend line break strategy. The, the trend lines are created on either daily, four hourly, hourly chart, the higher the time frame, the better. And then what you're expecting is you want the, the price to break. Because you know one thing, price always moves in waves. That's the one thing that no one can ever argue about, whether you call them Elliott waves or you call them something else. Price will always move in waves, right? And what we're expecting is that when price breaks past our trend line, we all get happy and excited. If it's bouncing off my trend line, it doesn't really make me happy. When it's breaking past my trend line, it tells me we're going to move in a particular direction now, right? It's an additional confirmation. So what I'm expecting is not to take an entry straight off the bat. I'm expecting price to come back and retest my trend line. So in this case, early Asian session, my trend line did retest off here. You wait for your confirmation. You don't, don't just take an entry off here. If you're doing it, stupidity. You wait for your confirmation that the market is bouncing off over there. Sometimes you will get like a, a morning star, evening star pattern formation here. Again, look for your specific market behavior type. Okay, sometimes maybe pin bars to the low here, go back up and aggressive move, your confirmation candle. Take, a, take an entry here, how many pips are we gonna collect? 
Anyone? Okay. At the top of this candle here is 21 pips. Given your spreads, you should have had your 20 pips. How many candles? One, two, three, four, that's an hour. Hour, 15 minutes. Your 20, your 20 pips are done. In early in the Asian session, you're a USD. And because of this move here, and you would have had all of this homework done, that when price does come back up and retest this, you're not constantly reanalyzing. You're kind of already expecting this to happen. Right, 20 pips, we're done. Again, depending on how much uh, lots you're throwing into something like this, apply money management to it as well. Um, that can be anywhere from uh, you know, five, 10 bucks to um, a couple of thousand. Okay, does this start to make sense? Uh, because you know, mate, I understand your email, but this kind of frustrates me and this is the reason why I come out and I say, don't join groups. Uh, don't go into um, Facebook's uh, you know pages and stuff and, and start listening to multiple people because people are going to come up with their own levels of understanding, and they will each person will apply this all of this stuff a different way. And when they start, they'll see someone else doing it some other way. They'll start then putting their opinions in there. Before you know it, way too many cooks in the kitchen. And if you're doing something that's working for you, you're going to ruin it by listening to people. So in this case, um, there's some things I agree with you here, but most of this is bullshit. Um, we know what these tools are, but you have to know how to utilize them. This thing about the, the 50 and the 200 EMA, We've been using that for donkey's years, right? Price, especially when it comes to binary, price does come and begin to behave in a certain way. I've made countless number of pips just doing something similar to, or not similar to, exactly the simple forex strategy. As simple as that, we, we can't make it any simpler than that. Price does come and commune near the 50 after the cross and it behaves a certain way, weeks to the high. Um, it also, which area of, the, of that whole entire session are they constantly working? Um, all of that sort of stuff, it makes sense. You've probably heard this. If you watch multiple YouTube videos and you're, you're listening to people that kind of know what they're talking about, you would have seen this. This is constant. This is not something that's new and, and where you know, you're know you saying it, it doesn't help you see anything. Of course it does. We're looking for the retest. We're looking for specific behavior around there. It's not giving us an answer like too late. It's giving an, uh, us an answer in real time. We're not utilizing the tools to tell us something. We're looking at price and, and price is telling us what it's doing around those areas that will then give us the indications to enter into our trades, right? Um, pin bars, again, you have a better understanding of how much the market actually requires to make those movements. Pin bars um, or, or candlestick patterns in particular, well, you've got to have an understanding about not, not just what the candlestick patterns are because you could place those candlestick patterns anywhere. You know, you're right. I think lack there of experience will say to you, well, when you see a pin bar in the middle somewhere, it doesn't necessarily mean that the market's going to continue, uh, or it's going to bounce from there and go in, in the opposite direction. Like in this case, this is a, a pin bar, right? Here. And price pushes up. But you would have thought, well, hey, Shiva was wrong because, you know, the market's, uh, after a pin bar, he said the market goes up. No, you got to know where a pin bar actually has to be for the market to behave a certain way. Right. So here, when we're looking at this, and this just confirms what I was saying earlier, when you're seeing price uh, behave in a certain way where, um, see this 50 and 200, they're communing close to each other, it's, and then they pull away from each other, and then what we're seeing is um, price consolidation happening. A couple of things are going to happen here. One is that if price is constantly, after this bounce coming up to commune with the 50 here, and, and even after this push away, you get this pin bar, what you're going to do is you're going to wait for price to break past the 50, come back and possibly retest this in a wick and then go up before you will consider uh, a trade going up, right? In this case, price, as soon as it does this, it's up at your 50. The 50 is also giving us an indication not to take the, the trade going and doing a call on this one because that is a dynamic resistance area, right? We utilize that information. Now, if you don't understand that, then of course you're going to say it's not telling me anything because you've got to know that language. It is speaking its own language to you right now. Uh, you've got to know the language in order to understand what it's telling you. So what we then have is a directional move away from the market, right? But whatever your analysis might have been, and in my case, my analysis was that 
price is going to at some point bounce off this trigger line which is a, a support line that I drew in which offer higher time frame and go in this direction so regardless of what the market's doing there I'm waiting for the market to do something here something that I recognize right it's it comes down to knowing where to look for these things it's not just about hey I'm gonna see a pin mouse I'm gonna trade uh, that's just pure stupidity market will never make it that easy for you and if it did we'd all be billionaires right so um, where your support and resistance lines are I could draw in support resistance lines anywhere you know as you're saying in the email you could show me absolutely I could draw them in anywhere like here let, let me drop a line in here let me just do that at the bottom of the Asian session here of course price is gonna break past here but look uh, by new traders there's instances here where price does come in respect this and you get a wick to the low off that line now if I was to draw that line in properly at the official low of um, the Asian session look at this price does respect it right but if I just throw it in anywhere and I could just say yep here's an area here price doesn't respect this so it does come down to knowing where to draw in your support and resistance line drawing it anywhere it doesn't make it a, 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 an ounce of difference but at the same time you can't make statements like this to say um, you know you can show you can show me where to draw them in they don't work you've got to know where to put them in that that makes sense harmonic patterns you can understand what the calculations are you can understand which patterns work better you can understand what time frames harmonic patterns are, are, are ideal on higher time frames Right? I wouldn't say to you go jump in and do them on 15 minute charts all of the time because market and if it's not aligned with uh, the market cycle for example if it's not aligned with seasonal targets you're not going to get shit out of it. so you're going to understand where to pay attention to the, the harmonic patterns when is it going to be a, um, a confluence point for you okay uh, moving averages same thing I mean, we, we don't want the moving averages to answer any sort of questions for us we don't want the trend lines to answer any questions for us, right? What we're doing is we're just saying to the trend lines, okay, I'm going to draw this in. I'm not going to I'm not going to waste my time sitting here all day. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let price do its own thing around there. Come and give it a nice big kiss, a nice big hug, wrap itself around it, and then maybe kick it on the butt on its way out. And this is where it's kicking it on the butt on its way out. That's where it gets my attention, and that becomes a focal point for me, right? Um, I don't care what anyone says, there are no specific secrets out there, right? Unless you have your institutional trade and you've got hordes of analysts who are giving you all sorts of information which gives you some sort of like oracle insight into what's going on down the track, fantastic. But if you're a retail trader, some of this stuff, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys now, this is going to sound, sound a bit harsh, nothing personal to anyone, it's all bullshit, right? Do not fall into these traps. Don't don't pay attention to too much crap like that. Um, this is most of this, my friend, is is nonsense. You've got to know how to use it. It's not just about you. You draw a couple of lines in, and you put your EMAs in there, and you expect it to just do something. And you know what it is. And, and Shiva is going to say it's always going to bounce off there. That's just stupidity. You got to know how to use it, and that's what I'm trying to teach you guys know exactly how to use it fibs of course fibs are percentages of the previous moves right um, now in this case when you're looking at them as targets if you know market cycle in most instances the market will move in in like percentages all of that is already like known proven fact and I don't know how long you've been trading for but if you go back through, through your charts over the last how many of the months and years the same thing is going to happen over and over and over again. There are times when people will come to me and say, hey, the 61.8 wasn't respected. Well, yeah, you were applying it to the wrong market cycle. Plus, the other thing is when you're applying it during an actual trend run and not a, a reversal run, right? A reversal where the, there's a trend run coming this way. Uh, let me see if I can find an example for you guys. It's a quick one. I saw something somewhere. What's this one doing? Okay, you could probably utilize this one here. Once the market's come down, done its thing, and then it's reversing back, right? Then it's going to come back down again. Now, when it's done its thing and it's reversing back up, here's the one thing that you start doing. Okay, previous high. Oh, sorry. Previous low. 
present high. All right, present high here. Market's coming back. We know a couple of things. When the market does do reversals, it's most likely going to do a 38.2, 50, and at best, our most favorite is the 61.8 line, right? Now, here, market bounces back. Early Asian session comes back, hits the 38.2. Fantastic. If we see the wick to the 38.2, we see specific um, candlestick patterns happening at the 38.2. After that, we've got an indication. Do we go up or not? If this sort of behavior happens at the open in London, brilliant. The, the, this thing's our friend. But notice how here, um, going into late London, early New York, price comes all the way back down again to hit us um, at the low of the 61.8, bouncing back up again, right? When you know, given market cycle, the weekly cycle, that the market has achieved possibly its low of the week, in this case, it would be here, then the lowest point that the market will ever come to is 61.8, either 78.6 or somewhere in between here. In this case, the wick comes in between the 61.8 and the 78.6. That's where it's coming to hit. We know that. So in that case, this is invalid. But if you're going to think that the max is always going to come and hit 61.8, it's not. There's only going to be certain uh, instances when it comes and hits it. What you're studying right now is those instances. So your goal is through experience to be able to know when the market is probably going to bounce off the 38.2 or the 50 or when it's going to bounce off the 68 point, um, sorry, 61.8. Now in this case again, when you have the bounce and specific candlestick behavior, you now know how to trade that. But if you don't apply any of this and you kind of just take all of this on board as saying, um, all, all, all you have is uh, collected data and that's it. Well, yes, there's collected data everywhere, but what the hell are you going to do with it? If you don't know how to read it, if you don't know what to do with collected data, obviously you don't know what to do with it next. In this case, all of this is collected data. All right, the, the, these dynamic trend lines is collected data. These EMA, um, uh, the, the um, moving average lines are all collected data. The EMA 200 takes in a, a calculation of the previous 200 candles. The 50 takes in a calculation of the previous 50 candles, right? Um, this Fib lines, yeah, of course it's a percentage calculation. But when we know how price behaves around those focal points, then we can start to focus in on those areas and look for entries on our trades. Does that make sense? I, I certainly hope that does. Um, the one thing that I want you guys to start doing is start focusing on these things. Don't focus on the literal uh, book um, um, definitions of some of these things. Learn on how to, to utilize them and where to utilize them. Okay. Um, what I'm personally doing is I'm trying to take all the institutional stuff that I was trained in and then transform them in a manner in which you guys like... I. I I don't want you going through having to pay thousands of dollars or to um, spend years upon years learning something that you could probably just simplify in the manner in which I'm trying to simplify for you right now. Take that and say, you know what, I'm just going to use this. I'm not going to listen to too many people, but I'm just going to use this and do uh, 3 by 20 pip trades every, every single week. That's all. And your life is going to be better for it. Right? At the same time, if you're starting to look at these focal points and you know directional move that's going to happen as a result of it and, and make sure it always happens after your confirmation comes in, you can start applying binary trades to it. And at the same time, when you've got your, your trend lines drawn in like this and you're expecting behavioral um, patterns to start uh, forming at your key uh, junctures, your, your trend lines and you've got your patterns formations that, that happen, Absolutely, you can do your Nadex trades on them as well. This is what I'm trying to teach you guys. This, you're just confusing yourself. And in a lot of ways, um, look, fantastic for the email. Thanks for writing all of this sort of stuff out. But this is not a, a, a method that I found. This is how I was trained. And this is the sort of stuff. There's, there's no other major secret to this. I can guarantee there are traders out there that utilize everything that you're kind of, kind of saying is defunct. They're utilizing this to make a lot of money and they're living off of this and they've been doing it for years upon years upon years, right? So 
you're focusing on the wrong stuff. And for anyone else that's been doing the same thing, um, please don't just create uh, thought patterns and beliefs and stuff that you will have off of all of this, right? And um, understand the tools that you're you're using. And if at any point in time things I say kind of are confusing, write to me, ask me, and um, in the comment section, ask. Um, especially under YouTube, if you ask there. I can respond there and more and more people can actually um, read the responses and learn from that as well. Okay, so I need some water and um, I believe that's it.